Thank you. Right, good afternoon. It's an absolute pleasure to have Nikki Pegg with me this afternoon. Again, Nikki Pegg, one of the people we've actually met in real life, haven't we? We have. Seems like a long time ago now. But it, yeah. no, that was the Isha, wasn't it, presumably? Isha, yeah, the, the Yorkshire Isha. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and and I've used Nikki personally. You you organised a mortgage for my eighty six year old mum, a tiny mortgage, my mum. Are you, are you at the time you decided equity relief wasn't for her, but a small mortgage was. So, Absolutely, you know, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So anyway, so it's an absolute pleasure, pleasure, and absolutely a delight for you to be here. And I, so I've used you, know how wonderful you are. So equity release, great. It's a great subject, equity release. Um, we, we talked we talked a lot about it. So you've got a question here, equity. So the first question, is equity release trustworthy, Nikki? Um, yes, it is. I know there's an awful lot of uncertainty about them um, because I think historically they weren't as well regulated and there were lots of... Um, uh, yeah, various sort of different um, bad presses, if you were, but it's so highly regulated now that that absolutely it is. Um, Equity Release Council cover it as a statement of principles that they provide, um, and it's highly regulated by the FCA. So, yeah. um, absolutely, it is very trustworthy, and you have to have a specialist qualification to advise on it. So, which, which yeah, you have, of course. Which I do have absolutely, and also to say, my mum's got an equity release mortgage, and I really wouldn't be comfortable with her having one if I thought there was anything untrustworthy about them. And I mean, I've said before, I remember your sixty seconds. I remember your sixty seconds that resonated so clearly. You told your story about your mum. Uh, I don't go into details now, but the, the actual story about the interest, whatever, and you and your sister are paying it, and it was the story resonated completely. Got it, okay, and that's what got me to to to, to work with you. So that was great. Okay. Um, so will I, will I still own my property? You do, absolutely. So equity release mortgages are just like standard mortgages. Um, so the lender takes a charge against the property and you um, yeah, you continue to own it for, for the rest of life. Um, and they also offer a guarantee um, that they you, know, you, you will stay in your home for the rest of your life unless you need to move out into long-term care or, of course, unless you decide otherwise. But, yeah, absolutely, you retain full ownership of your home all the time. Okay, and is it, can I move house in the future? Yes, you can. So um, with equity release mortgages, there's, there's various different ways of looking at that, um, but you can either apply to port the mortgage. So again, as you would a traditional mortgage, you can take it with you if you move, as long as that property is suitable for the equity release lender. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, some lenders do offer what they call downsizing protection. So if you did actually decide after a certain number of years that you wanted to sell and downsize, then in some cases you can pay it off without penalty. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really important thing that I talk to clients about, um, is just to talk about their future plans. And it's more important than ever that you do that with equity release. Cool. Um, well, which, and which, structuring it correctly. And which, which companies are in the equity release market? I mean, these are huge companies, well, well known companies, presumably. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's an awful lot of lenders out there, but the likes of Legal and General, um, a company called More to Life, who are very um, specialist in that area, Canada mm -hmm. Life. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, an awful lot of well-known companies that provide equity release solutions. It's also important to know, like you said at the beginning, that I don't just focus on equity release. So any clients that are over 55, um, and more typically people that are in retirement in their 70s, 80s maybe, I will look at other options with them as well. So mm -hmm. we talk about whether they can afford to make monthly payments, whether in a traditional mortgage that's just a kind of a lending into retirement type mortgage, mm -hmm. like we, we did for your mum, whether that might be more suitable perhaps than an equity release mortgage in some cases. So yeah. I do look at all the options. Yeah, I mean, I hadn't, I hadn't even considered a normal mortgage for my mum, uh, but as it worked out perfectly, and of course it was much cheaper, um, much cheaper when we come to cash it in or pay it off in a couple of years' time. Yeah, that's right. Depending on client circumstances, equity release isn't always right anyway, depending on their future plans. So, Okay, well, these, I love these next questions. So how old do I need to be to take out an equity release mortgage and how much can I borrow? Okay, so you can be as young as 55. Mm -hmm. um, they start at 55. And if it's a joint mortgage, it's the age of the youngest person. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of how much you can borrow, it typically starts at around 20% of your property value. Um, and it's very much age related. So it's 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 not about income like standard mortgages are necessarily. Um, but yeah, they look at your age and the value of the property and that determines how much you can borrow. Um, so usually starts at around 20 percent, rising up to about 55 percent if you're sort of into your 80s and 90s. So there's quite a wide range of options. I mean, I mean, and presumably if if you do find if you do know somebody with no dependents who are who's asset rich and cash poor, 
Um, I mean, why wouldn't they take out an equity relief mortgage? Absolutely. I mean, some people do use them for um, like inheritance tax planning as well. Mm. So maybe to give early gifts of inheritance to family. Um, but yeah, it, there's, there's really an awful lot of reasons why people might do it. And that range is right from simply needing a bit of money to help supplement your income in retirement through to home improvements, mm. holiday of a lifetime, and also for inheritance tax planning, perhaps for early gifts for children and to set children and grandchildren maybe on the property ladder, that sort of thing. Yeah, excellent. OK. Will I need to make monthly repayments? Not necessarily. Um, the nice thing is you can, if you can afford to, you mm. can make ad hoc payments towards, um, and then it acts really like an interest only mortgage. Uh, but if for any reason you, you don't want to or you're unable to make monthly payments, then the interest um, sort of rolls up. So it, it you know, it, it accumulates. Um, and yeah, you kind of think that increases on a yearly basis. However, at the moment, interest rates are really low. So that rate of increase is an awful lot lower than perhaps people might expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, let's, I mean, let's not even talk about mortgage rates. I, mean, I remember my first mortgage was in the 80s. And I bought one in the 90s. I mean, 15% or something was something ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, I was an advisor for NatWest Bank at that time. And we were offering a 10-year fixed rate at 9.99%. And an awful lot of people took that because, as you rightly say, the base rate was sitting at something like 13%. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. people were concerned that they were going to keep going up. So they locked into a 10-year fixed rate at just under 10%, which these days is crazy. I mean, you can, five year fixed rates now in traditional mortgages, five year yeah. fixed rates are, are really low. You can get them starting with a one in some cases. So I'm going to go slightly off topic for you talk about mortgages. I think, I think, the, I think the, the thing that puts people off a lot of the time is the admin and the paperwork filling out. How, 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 how do you manage to make it stress free? It certainly was with my mum, but how, but I mean, what's your approach to the admin and the, and the form filling? Well, I do it all for you, basically, or as much as I can do. Um, so after we've had our initial chat um, and I've made my recommendations, if, if the clients decide to go ahead, then I will. I mean, there's certain information I need them to complete. So but it's just a comparatively very small form. And I then take that information, transpose it onto lenders application forms and onto any systems that's, that, yeah, that is required. So hopefully I'll take an awful lot of pressure and stress out of the admin side of it. And then we oversee the case then right from application. Uh, through to completion and in this in the case of equity release mortgages I also have a team of people that help oversee that so some dedicated case handlers that are also liaising with the lenders and solicitors um, so hopefully from a client's point of view it's very hassle-free good I, I mean and, and I mean obviously Zuko is kind of mostly self-employed but the self-employed can get mortgages just as easily mostly yeah absolutely again ranges from lender to lender but um sort of putting COVID aside for the moment, there, there are lenders that will lend against maybe just one year's account. So if you're a new business startup and you've had a good first year, you can borrow against your first year's accounts often. Um, some lenders will look at an average of two years or three years. Um, and there's lots of different ways that they'll do that. So they don't only rely. So if you're a limited company, for example, you traditionally would expect to be able to borrow against your salary and your dividends that you pay yourself. Mm -hmm. But actually, for some people, they only pay themselves what they need to live. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily draw out bigger dividends than you need. Mm -hmm. And there are some lenders that absolutely recognise that. And they'll lend against people's net profit or they retain their share of the retained profit. Mm -hmm. So what they could have paid themselves as a dividend, but have just chosen not to because their lifestyle doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's an awful lot of ways that lenders will help um, self-employed people. Good. And, 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 yeah. Sorry, go on. No, 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 the first part of call, though, anyone wants a conversation, have a conversation, it's free of charge, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, we do charge for our service, but that's not until successful completion. So in terms of picking up the phone, having a chat, um, and even making recommendations and things, there's absolutely no cost at all. So it's always worth having a chat and seeing where you stand, really, whether it's now or whether you're planning for the future. Good, good. good. OK, well, well, OK, back to your wonderful questions. <laughs> uh, do, I, do I have to back to equity release? Do I have to borrow everything I need at once? No. Um, equity release... Because interest accumulates on the amount you've borrowed only, um, equity release offer what's called a drawdown service or some providers and some products do. So you could say, right, I need £10,000 now to do some home improvements. However, I think that over the next few years, I'm going to need £5,000 a year to supplement my income, for example. And if that's the case, then we can work out a plan and a product that allows you to have what they call an initial drawdown, first of all. So you have an initial lump sum that you need for your immediate needs. And then you can have a pot of money called a drawdown pot, 
that you can call on in the future if you want to. So you're under no obligation to take it and you don't start paying for it until you draw it down. Mm -hmm. So that's a really nice way of structuring it. So if you don't need everything immediately, just have it in the pot and take it as and when you need it in the future. Mm, okay, excellent. Um, okay, will, will equity relief affect my benefits? Um, in some cases it can do. So that's also where I do very um, stringent checks with people. So we look at what benefits the client's entitled to before equity release mm -hmm. and also what benefits they'd be entitled to afterwards to make sure that it doesn't affect anything. If mm -hmm. it does, we'd make sure the clients are fully aware of it. In a lot of cases, they'll go ahead anyway, because actually, you know, they need that lump sum for certain reasons. And if it means that it affects maybe their council tax benefit, for example, they're not too worried about it. But we certainly make sure that they're very well aware of, of what would change if they did enter into it, the equity release agreement. Good. OK, well, as I said, I've, I've used you myself, so I know how easy it is to talk to you. You make it, you make it very, very clear. You made, you made it very clear to my mum. And, and a, lot of, a lot of your stuff is over, over Zoom now, online, presumably, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can do face-to-face um, -face appointments now. We are able to do, but a lot of people aren't comfortable doing that. And, and Zoom is absolutely the same, really. Um, so, yeah, Zoom or telephone or face-to-face, -face, whichever works best. Lovely, thank you. Okay, so can I release equity even though I haven't paid off my mortgage? Yeah, you can. And actually, a lot of people release equity to pay off their mortgage. So um, there's a lot of people perhaps maybe coming to the end of their current mortgage, might have been an interest only mortgage. And they're just at the time they thought they'd be ready to sell and downsize. But that time's come around really quickly and they've changed plans and they really don't want to necessarily have to move to pay off their mortgage. So quite a lot of the time we'll actually arrange equity release mortgages to clear the customer's mortgage and maybe to raise extra money if they, they need that as well. Mm. Oh, well. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Um, can, I, can I still leave an inheritance? Yes, you can. Um, so, again, it's, these are all options with, with certain products and providers. So this is where it's really important that I have those conversations with people up front. Um, so there are providers and products that allow you to ring fence a certain amount of money. Um, so, for example, I had one lady who she had four grandchildren and she wanted to make sure that no matter what happened to anything else, they inherited £10,000 each from her. So what we did is we ring fenced £40,000 mm -hmm. for the amount that she could borrow, which reduced the amount she was entitled to. However, it still gave her enough. And that, then she is secure and safe knowing that whatever happens to the interest on the equity release mortgage, when she passes away or when the equity release mortgage has to be paid off, then there'll be forty thousand pounds that ring fence for her grandchildren, and that was so important for her to be able to do that. Oh, wonderful! That's very, very clever, isn't it? Okay, I, I didn't realize that was possible. Certainly, yeah, it's a nice feature. It, yeah, it really does work well for some people. I mean, not everybody wants to necessarily do that, and an awful lot of children refer their parents to me. So maybe some of my mortgage customers, um, and they'll say, "Look, do you know, we're not worried about inheriting money. Just let them, you know, well, mum and dad or whoever it is to enjoy their retirement." spend all their money and if there's anything left over brilliant we'll have it but if not don't worry you know that's the least thing on our minds and that's really nice to hear um, and it does mean that the parents then have that flexibility to do what they want to do rather than what they feel they should be doing yeah no very very very, very true i got here if it's, a bit of a slight comment, if it's a joint mortgage one of us moves into care or pass it away will the remaining spouse have to sell the property um the answer is no so it's always based on the um, the, the second person, if you like. So with a joint vital, uh, vital, sorry, a joint equity release mortgage, mm -hmm. it's the the youngest person, or sorry, the, the person who passes away or moves into care first. Um, that is then the remaining person. I'll answer this very well. Let me start again. So with a joint mortgage, with people, it's the mortgage has to be paid on death or moving into long term care, but it's always of the second person. So sadly, if anything happens to the first person, then the other party is allowed to remain in the house for as long as they want to. Mm -hmm. However, the nice thing that some providers have started doing now is that they, again, we need to have this conversation in advance because it's not a feature of every product, but they do allow what they call, a, a, there's a three year period of time. So from the first party part, it's in a way of move term care, they'll give the second person a period of three years to choose to sell the property if they want to because some people don't want to stay in the house you know if someone's passed yeah, away they, their plans change they don't necessarily want to stay in that home mm -hmm. um and the nice thing now is that a feature as i said is that they it's quite recent is that they built in this three-year time period so if, if you want to move perhaps to be nearer your children if you're left on your own 
you can do that without incurring any early repayment charges with some products and some providers. So it doesn't have to be, but in some cases it can be paid mm -hmm. back. Okay, so we, we, we're on to, on to mortgages. I mean, mortgages, I, said, I, I was briefly, I didn't do it myself, but I, work, I worked alongside a mortgage broker. Um, and so the different types of mortgages you can get, you mentioned buy to let. Um, I mean, everyone, everyone I seem to know seems to be buying properties and doing properties and renting properties. So, I mean, do you get involved in the buy to let or the let to buy? I mean, tell me, what was the difference? Remind me, what was the difference between buy to let and let to buy? Um, both pretty similar in terms of products, but let to buy is when you're actually going to be keeping your existing property mm -hmm. and renting it out and then moving on to buy another main residence. Mm -hmm. So you transfer or you, you remortgage that home to a buy to let mortgage mm -hmm. because you're letting it to buy another one so you release equity from it for your deposit mm -hmm. and that becomes your new residential mortgage deposit mm -hmm. so it's two mortgages really you do a buy to let remortgage on your current property mm -hmm. and then a residential purchase mortgage for your new place mm -hmm. so that's a let to buy situation buy to let is, is is whether you've either it's been your property in the past you know your main residence and you've retained it Mm -hmm. or you're buying it purely for investment but yeah i do get involved in both of those and also there are options for people to buy in limited company names which has certain tax um advantages or tax differences mm -hmm. so for some people buying in a limited company name might work out better than buying in their personal name but i can't actually give people tax advice but certainly you can talk them through the sort of the pros and cons mm -hmm. um, and then direct them to tax advisors to to make sure that they're clear of exactly what they're doing and which way they should be, you know, buying the property for their own personal circumstances. And what? Uh, what and, so, yeah, uh, and, I, and I've got a range of different. Come no, on. No, yeah, no, yeah, you're, you're breaking. No, I was just going to say I've got a range of different. Oh, sorry. So I've got a range of different portfolio landlords and yeah, you know, people that own sort of one or two properties, right up to people that own 50, 60 properties in some cases. So, you know, the, the um, and it's different. So if you've got four or more properties. You're treated differently by lenders than if you've got less than four. Um, so, yeah, different products, different providers, um, which, again, is really why you should be using a broker. And, and the, the people with 50 or 60 properties, have they got, have they, have they got mortgages on these 50, 60 properties? In a lot of cases, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, mostly historic, and it's portfolios that they've either bought as a lump sum or, you know, it built up over the years. But... Mm -hmm. um, I tend not to, to to have many of those on my, you know, as clients, but um, certainly know a lot of colleagues that really specialise and, and and deal really with portfolio landlords as their main yeah and as their main business. Mm. And, but, and we talked before we before we I, I hit the record button. We talked about um, your business itself because you, obviously you 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 were traditionally a mortgage broker. Now you're into equity release. Well, and what are your what are your what are your longer term plans for your business for the two? Um, I. I'm passionate about equity release and advising people over 55, which is kind of where all these high, there's also some hybrid products that, that are about for that age range. And since I'm rapidly hurtling towards that myself, I am, um, I, I see myself really stepping away from in the longer term, perhaps stepping away from traditional mortgages mm -hmm. um, and then maybe focusing more on just specializing and advising over 55s and on, different types of mortgages including equity release but mm -hmm. at the moment I'm more than happy to, to kind of do both alongside each other because there is an awful lot of synergy and an awful lot of crossover still mm -hmm. um, but yeah that's kind of where I see myself going longer term perhaps I mean again it, the, it the, makes such a difference. yeah I mean, I mean there appears to be a huge amount of money tied up in property I mean I mean like my mum you know she you know asset rich and cash poor and you know she's you know she's hurtling towards 90 you know she's a decent sized house uh, but you know, so she's still got life in her, still got holidays to have. And I mean, she well, given half a chance, she'd buy a brand new Porsche. But I need to discourage <laughs> I need to discourage you from that at 87. I can't no, let her go for it. <laughs> she's not your mum, though, is she, Nick? She's right, Yeah, no, I think I probably think twice of it as my mum. Mind you, haven't seen my mum's driving. Exactly. She's like driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I mean, I mean, who's your ideal client? Who's your perfect client? Who, who are you looking to, to connect with? I think now, um, I really want to start focusing more on equity release. And do you know, really, I mean, whilst arranging big mortgages for people that have got lots of, you know, lots of property and want to sort out their inheritance tax kind of position, it really is lovely mm. to kind of just look at helping people that have worked hard all their lives, mm. um, sitting, as you've rightly said, on, on, you know, a big asset in property, but, but scrabbling to kind of make ends meet on a normal basis and not being able to afford a holiday or a new car and, mm. I the most the my kind of why 
about doing equity release is one particular customer who she really was struggling to make ends meet and she wouldn't put her heating on she wouldn't turn her mm -hmm. heating up she'd you know, put an extra layer on and turn, mm -hmm. put another gas ring on the fire or whatever mm -hmm. but giving her a bit of money extra which wasn't much but I think we only did about 15,000 pounds it made the most immense difference to her life and it was just it was really emotional actually it was the most rewarding thing I've ever done I think is just because she didn't have to worry she could shop yeah. where she wanted to mm -hmm. she could treat her family to a little holiday it was just the, the change in her was amazing and if I can do that for more people then that's really what I want to be doing that's a lovely story I mean again I mean, we touch upon I mean, when you get old and if you if you do have an asset you know that asset is sold to help pay for your pay for your care um and so in some ways spend it while you can kind of stuff yes yeah absolutely i mean you know you need to be mindful that as i've said already you know it's just one option for releasing money out of your property mm -hmm. but yeah in most cases family support them. i'd always like to try and see the family as well if i can so mm -hmm. so there's no shocks or surprises you know in the mm -hmm. future it's always nice to be able to engage the family and make sure that they're comfortable with what mum or dad are doing mm -hmm. um but yeah it's it's People work so hard all their lives and, and it's just such a shame when, mm -hmm. you know, they can't enjoy it and limit what they do because of it. And that's, yeah, that's the bit I don't really like. So it's, yeah. it's lovely to be able to help in that. And, and, I mean, my mum's own, my, my, my mum's own financial position. I mean, she's got energy and life in her now. She might not, she might not in, you know, in, in five years time. Uh, we've got someone popping in from Texas, actually. I'm going to let, let Theresa in, we're from Texas, but we're going we're, we're to wrap up in a minute. Okay. Um, I would, I'd, like to, I'd like to talk to you about your... Uh, good afternoon, Theresa, you're coming to an end, but we're just just listen listen, listen intently, please. I'm just finishing with Nikki Pegg about equity release and mortgages. But, um, Nikki, tell us about your networking journey. Tell us about when did you start networking, what have you got to enjoy and networking, and most importantly, obviously, gives you a bit of a plug, obviously. Well, for me, it started, I used to work at a financial advisors um, a long time ago, mm -hmm. and I didn't really do any networking at all. And the idea, this, this guy that I worked with used to do BNI, and every Friday morning or every Thursday he was preparing for his BNI on Fridays. Um, and the idea of what he did absolutely filled me with dread. I am not a particularly confident speaker, and yeah, anyway, it was never going to happen for me, ever. However, business got quiet and I got a phone call from somebody who ran a networking company, a business in Kingston at the time, looking for a mortgage advisor. So I went along very, very reluctantly, sweaty palms, prepared my minute. I just read it, mm -hmm. like didn't look up and probably made absolutely no sense whatsoever. Didn't hear what I said, didn't hear what anybody else said. I was so, so scared. Um, but that was eight years ago now, I think, something like that. Um, and networking has been the best thing for me ever in terms of building my confidence as a person to be able to speak out and stand up in front of people so yeah then I've just kind of immersed myself in as much as I can do and um, met you you know for another networking group and and so it's fantastic you know and what you've done I think is amazing Nick, to be quite honest um, and your energy and enthusiasm is positively infectious bless you and I, love, I do yeah. really really yeah. mean that because yeah. it's it's, it's a very different approach, which I think is really refreshing and, and fantastic. So, yeah, well, if, yeah if, if you can't have fun while you're doing, while you're doing, you can't have fun while you're doing business. But as I, I go back to the power of networking, and I remember your 60 seconds well, and your 60 seconds that resonated so clearly. You told your story, you told your story about your mum, you told kind of in detail what she wanted, what you did, and how you and your sister, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was a, a lovely, and from that moment on, there was any other, you know, it was great. It was, it was a personal story. And of course, that's the beauty of networking. Tell a story that people can relate to. You told a story, okay, and I could relate to it. I understood your mum needed some money for whatever purpose, and you were there to get it for her. So that's, I mean, that resonated. So, I mean, so, I mean, your, your thoughts about in-person networking, at some point you're going to go back to in-person networking, are you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't think it can be beaten, really. I think um, Zoom is, is a great alternative, um, mm -hmm. you know, as a must. And I think, actually, to be able to continue to do some over Zoom, because the travelling yeah. sometimes is, is not necessarily, you know, yeah. easy to do. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think, yeah, as soon as I can get back to local networking, in person, yeah, brilliant. Can't yeah. wait. But well, I think there's still a place for online yeah. networking. Okay, yeah. When it comes to speed networking, we've got the speed networking tomorrow. I mean, you, your your business, your service is kind of people get it straight away. 
people understand the equity release mortgages, they understand it's very cut and dried. So it's when you meet people and speed networking or in person, they get your energy, they connect with you straight away. So the speed networking tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, it's like 10 rooms, you, you have your chance to talk to 10 people, which is great. Speed networking in real life, I don't know if you've ever done speed networking in real life, but speed networking in real life, it's awful, dreadful, a long table, 10 people down one side, 10 people down the other side. You talk for five minutes to the person opposite you. Someone rings a bell normally, and then one side moves. It's a shambles. It's noisy. Chairs are moving. And, of course, you can hear either side of you. And so you can hear five people. Two either side of you, two over there, one in person. So it's a horrible. But, of course, Zoom has made it possible to have breakout rooms. And so speed networking will never, ever not go online. And I'll be running speed networking every week, probably. And different times of the day. I mean, Teresa, all the way in Texas at the moment. So, wow. it's, so it's 9 o'clock in the morning for Teresa. So, again, so I'll be doing 4 o'clock, you know, from now on kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag Teresa into this. So thank, thank you, Teresa. Teresa is our Spanish language expert. Um, mortgages, mortgages and equity release. Do you know much about it? What's the, what's the news in the States? No, I know nothing about it. You know nothing. I mean, Nikki, do you know anything about the equity release or mortgage market in the States? Um, no, not in the States. No, a little bit about it in Spain, but, but not in the States, no. Okay. I, I think it's... Um, as far as I understand, it's probably how we used to, and I'll f- correct me if I'm wrong, Teresa, but I think it's how we used to be in terms of everything sort of lent more at a local level. Mm-hmm. So I, th- I don't know whether that's that's the case now, but I think it yeah. used to be. Yeah. Oh, well, so, well, you know, so okay, we've we talked about your ideal client, we talked about equity release, we talked about mortgages. It didn't, I mean, who have you, can you think of a, can you think of a nightmare client? No names, obviously. Who's your, who'd be, who'd be your worst client? It sounds really cheesy, but I honestly have never had a nightmare client. That's good. I think the reason is because when you start talking to people, you either connect or you don't. Yeah. And if you don't connect with them, yeah. um, then they probably don't come back to you. Mm-hmm. So as a result of that, the people that I do work with are people that I have been delighted to work with and hopefully are, are happy to work with me because you have to have that connection. Mm-hmm. And I think I will say that there's sometimes maybe, and it doesn't happen to me very often, but there are maybe sometimes when you start speaking to somebody and you just think, I'm not sure that this is going to mm-hmm. not, not work from a relationship perspective, but it just, yeah. you don't gel sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think then, you know, whilst I carry on doing my job as I would always do, um, you know, it, it sometimes doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. So actually, if you get to a point where they become a client, then... I don't have a nightmare client. And in fact, an awful lot of my clients have become good friends because I've been doing this job since Jesus was a boy. And therefore, <laughs> I've remortgaged people a lot and helped their families, their, their parents or their children. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm really... Well, 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 no, well, you had the pleasure of meeting my mum. I think we managed to, uh, we managed to, avoid, bre- we managed to avoid Brexit, didn't we? I think, did we? I think we, we probably just about did. Yeah, but she's lovely. Your mum's brilliant. She, no, she is. She, she, she truly, but other than Such a character. She certainly is, absolutely. But as I said, no, you were, you were, she was delighted to work with you. You were easy to work with, um, reliable. It just, it made, you made the whole process simple. And we looked Thank at equity you. release. It wasn't for her. So she interest only mortgage, a small mortgage. She wanted some money to give to, to my sister. And she wanted some money for herself to do some home improvement. Thankfully, not to buy a Porsche, okay, which is, which is quite good. I mean, you know, no 87 year old needs to buy a new Porsche. Then, <laughs> you know. Should have bought one for you. And then you could have just driven her around oh what a great idea all right well i'm gonna <laughs> so, i mean i'm, I'm gonna i'm a tree so before we well, before we close any any questions for nikki i mean you don't have to have a question for nikki well just uh what do you do because i i sorry i just yeah j- jumped in to say hi but uh, i just want to know just briefly um so we are we talking about what do you do mm-hmm. i'm sorry for missing um this. so oh no no it's fine i'm i'm a mortgage advisor um but i specialize in advising people age over 55 uh, because there's a specific type of mortgage called an equity release mortgage that um, okay. people in that age range sort of fit into. Um, but also there's other different products as well. But that's kind of where I'd like to specialise. However, I do help first time buyers and people under 55 with any. I mean, I mean this, in this country, you, as you know, as you all know, Trees, there's been a big, big push over the years. Buying your own home is the be all and end all. It's the Xanadu. OK, so everyone buys their own property. And then like my mum, she's 87. She is, you know, cash poor, asset rich. She's sitting on the house. Well, seven hundred thousand pound with no money in the bank—it's crazy. And so, she, with equity release, she releases some of that money. 
okay, and has that cash, okay, and so it's a, it's the best of both worlds. So we talked about equity release in the last last half an hour. So, okay, well, that's it. Thank you so much. No pleasure, pleasure. Nice, love, nice well, meeting you, Nikki. Well, well, thank you, thank, thank you for joining. Thank you. Oh, well, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now.